Hey guys, how's it going? DUJ2 here, and welcome back to Fortnite Save the World, and welcome to a little bit of a different video. Today, we are going to be doing a Trello board slash Let's Talk slash update video talking about what is going on. What is going on with Save the World? What's happening with Save the World in the last couple of updates? Including a lot of the bugs that are happening, what Epic is saying about them because, surprise, surprise, Epic is actually talking to us. Epic is actually communicating with us on some of these. So we're going to talk about all that, guys. But first, thank you much for being here, guys. Thank you much for watching. Thank you much for supporting. Thank you much for using my credit code, DUJ2. If you're using it to buy some llamas here and save the world with V-Bucks or over in Battle Royale, if you are using it to buy some skins or, or dances or anything like that, using my creator code, DUJ2, helps me out so very much. It helps me out a lot, guys. Thank you very much. I really, really, really appreciate it. So let's jump into this. Also, if you're wondering about the mask, check the link down below in the description. And please do me a favor and let me know if you guys are liking the new format of videos. Uh, these videos are a little bit more informative. Uh, I am trying to include more of that into it, as well as I am putting the um, the chapters down below. Like uh, I'm putting timestamps so you guys can jump to different places in the video. Let me know if you guys like that so we can go for it. So let's go ahead and start with, well, let me start with a little bit of, a, of a, what's going on here. So ever since version 15.20, you guys know that we've had a lot of different things happen to save the world. There's been a lot of talk about save the world. Uh, well, I mean, I made a video where I was told by someone that all of the files from save the world were removed from the core game and they were put outside. And then now the core game is battle royale and creative and save the world is what battle royale used to be. You battle royale used to be outside plugged into the core game that was save the world, but now it's the other way around. Um, and for me personally, I've been saying this for a very long time. If they ever were to separate the games like that, I would consider it not a good thing because that means that they could quickly and easily add, remove, or do anything and save the world without affecting battle royale. Because you guys know for a long time, that's been a big problem. Anytime that something happens to save the world or battle royale, it affects the other one. And, um, even though they've shown that if something happens bad and save the world, they're not really rushing to fix it. They do need to rush and fix it in Battle Royale because Battle Royale has millions of players daily compared to save the world, which has much less. I don't know how many players we have now, maybe a few dozen thousand, 10,000, 20, 50. I don't know if we have a hundred thousand, you know, I'd be very curious to know how many players there are actively every day in save the world. Uh, but we can't possibly be as many as Battle Royale. So that's always been something that they've had it to, to, to take a look at. And we've always known that that's a problem. Now, now, this is the thing. Now things have changed. And yes, I'm going to go through and talk to you guys about this. Uh, I'm going to give a huge shout out to, I, I know his name is no longer Inside Home Base. Uh, it is. It's still Inside Home Base. So the, for those of you who don't know who Inside Home Base uh, I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to his uh, Twitter. You should guys should go check him out. Really awesome guy. I've talked to him a lot and he actually helped me. He is a data, data miner and one of those people. And he explained to me a lot of what's going on right now and what they did, what they changed and how they changed it. So we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but first, let me go ahead and jump into here. We're going to look at the Trello board. And actually, before we jump into Trello board, like I said, we're going to talk about Trello board. Uh, we're going to talk about what's been going on, what's been changing. And then we're going to talk about the, well, the positive, <laughs> because actually there's been some very interesting positive of what's been going on. So let's start with the Trello board. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Trello board is, the Trello board is a cool place where you can actually, if you've never seen it, it's kind of like a message board where you can post and you can put, okay, this is what's wrong. This is what's going on with the game. And a lot of developers use it as their own personal kind of, um, kind of like a whiteboard where they write different things. So different people can see it, communicate and make things easy like that. And, um, there is one for the community. There's a Fortnite community issues one. And, uh, over here we have a save the world area and this area has actually been quite, and I do mean 
quite active since the updates. Uh, if we go all the way down here, there's a disable pre-edit option, which actually sh uh, showed up January 31st, which is not that long ago. We've got a uh, locating a dirt burger, not counting towards the locating burger break ventures quest. Uh, this one was uh, reported on January 13th. So I don't think that that one's active anymore, is it? Um, Mythic Lead Survivor Portraits appearing only as silhouettes. We we showed that previously that uh, currently they're not in the game. If you look at the Mythic Survivors, they're just silhouettes. They're not there. Uh, Mythic Lead Survivors uh, Portraits appear only as silhouettes. This is a visual only issue and all your survivors will properly grant stats of slotted. And this was posted on February 2nd. Uh, and it says it's going to be fixed in a future game update, which actually... As of the moment of this video, I don't know if it's been fixed. Let me go ahead. I know you guys can't see behind me right now. Uh, well, you guys can see a little bit, but let me go to survivors, manage. No, there's still there's. Uh, you guys can still see back here behind me. You guys can see right there. They're still they're still uh, silhouetted. So that has not been fixed yet. Uh, escalation modifier damage buff does not buff hero skills or gadgets. The damage bonus gained from the Escalation modifier does not buff the damage done by hero skills or gadgets. This will not affect traps. Um, so basically this was shown on February 3rd and it will be fixed the next game update. Next we have... So that one's not a good one. So your hero skills or gadgets are not buffed by the Escalation. It, it should, right? I'm, if I'm reading this correctly, it should. But again, next up, game update. Uh, broadside traps are dealing less damage than intended. Uh, we did talk about this in the previous video as well. Um, someone did tell me in the Discord and in stream, they actually said, hey, you know, my broadsides are not doing damage. And it seems like that's also going to be fixed in the next game update. And this one came up yesterday. So if you guys are seeing a theme here, there's been a lot, a lot of communication here. Now, this one right here is one that's been active since May 8th, 2020. Uh, which is the crashing during endurance and also the broken pickaxe animations, which has been active since December 15th, 2020. So if you guys see those two there, uh, those are in development and there's a new update. What's the new update? Uh, new update January 19th. Sent this card to the board. So was it fixed? I don't know. Snake Eyes Katana. I don't know what that is. Uh, please read update update the team will continue to investigate the endurance crashes so that one's just something that's been happening all over the place and a general bug that's still been happening to some people for a long time i don't do endurance so i don't know if it's going to happen to me or not but if you guys see here we do have multiple different messages we do have multiple different posts here that have been posted and that's pretty awesome that's really awesome to see that there has been more communication and that's the whole point of what i'm trying to say right now this is a good thing this is a positive and it's a interesting positive because it's not something we were expecting now for those of you who have like i said before so we're done with the trello this is trello if you guys want to see more i'll leave down below a link in the description uh moving on to the next one which is what is happening what's going on right now in save the world what's happening and for those of you, I have to start by saying this. I did say a long time ago that I believe that if they ever separated Save the World from Battle Royale Creative, that that could very much be the beginning of the end. I've been saying this for a very long time. And the reason why I've been saying this is because I highly believe that... I highly believe that if... If they were to do this, if they were to separate the games, it would be much simpler for them to just shut off parts of Save the World or remove like something's causing a bug in Save the World, although we'll just turn it off and deal with it later. Kind of like out of sight, out of mind. I've been thinking about this for a very long time and I've always been afraid that they would do that. But there have been people out there who have said and I, I have completely admit that it could be a positive. And by this, I mean separating a game like this separating fortnite save the world from fortnite battle royale and splitting them so that doing one thing and one another is not going to affect the another one could be really good it could be very positive and the reason why that could be very positive is because well if you have a team working on save the world they don't have to wait for battle royale anymore 
we have a joke here where we say that um, developer Cloakstar is the only developer left for Save the World, but that may be true. It may be true that there is one developer left, one person left taking care of Save the World. And I don't know, maybe there's more, maybe, maybe there's one or maybe there's more, but we're going to say that developer Cloakstar, there is one and he is advocating for us and developer Cloakstar is working. I don't know what the long-term ramifications of this are going to be. I don't know if this is going to be something that is going to continue to improve. There's only so much that one person can do. If it's a full team, maybe there's more, but let's pretend it's just one. Let's just pretend it's just developer Cloakstar and developer Cloakstar right now seems to be communicating. There is things that are going on. There are things that are happening in the game. Definitely developer Cloakstar is trying all of these things here in the trello board show that they show that someone is out there identifying the tickets and the issues that are coming in and they're posting them here saying hey look we know now if we go into the game too let me go ahead and take this down for a second for you um bloop. okay and if we go over here into the map, you guys can see right here, we've got a little announcement that says broadside trap issue. We're aware of the issue with the broadside trap dealing less damage than intended. We recommend holding off on heavily utilizing the trap until this issue is resolved. So right there, that's pretty awesome. That right there is something that yes, yes, it happened two days ago. And yes, yes, this could have been added two days ago. But, and this is the key thing, guys, it's very possible that now they are able to do this. The fact that they can do this now means that they have access to the Save the World, let's call them plugins, making it so much easier. It's so much easier now for developer Cloakstar to be like, okay, there's this problem to save the world. Let me go fix it and push out an update or push out something to fix it. Now, obviously a lot of these updates are going to be coming out in the next big update. And this is the next question we have too. What's going to happen from now on for us, our weekly resets are in the weekly shop and weekly missions are on Wednesdays, Wednesday, the 7 PM Eastern and our weekly updates, event updates, when our game updates, when our shop updates, all that happens on Sunday. So is it possible that we're going to change? We're no longer going to be doing the update whenever. Is it possible that Save the World could be live when Battle Royale goes down? Now, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think what's going to happen is that they're just going to go ahead and um, they're just going to push out updates with the regular updates at Tuesday. What is it? Four in the morning, Tuesday, 4 a.m. East, uh, Eastern, I think. Yeah, Eastern yeah we're we're probably going to keep doing that but it is possible now that they can actually fix things and plug in plug out and remove things and fix things as they need to which is very positive now let me explain a little bit more about the whole plugin things and again huge thanks to uh inside home base like i said i'll leave a link down below to his um to his Twitter, if you guys want to go check it out, but I was chatting with him uh, and again, huge thanks to him because he is he is really, really knowledgeable. Um, and he says, uh, let's see, let me find this again. He said, um, doo -doo -doo -doo. he said, Epic moves, moved most of the Save the World content into a plugin separate from the main files with the recent update, not the one this morning, but the one before. And from what I know, you, uh, you, uh, Unreal Engine 4 plugins can be easily enabled or disabled at any time. Now, what does that mean? So let's think of it this way. Let's think of save the world like a potato. Okay. You got a potato right here. Sorry. Fortnite. Now it's Fortnite Battle Royale. Fortnite Battle Royale is like a potato right here. And what we're doing is that now we've got these plugins. We've got these, I don't know, you want a fork if you want to call it or whatever you want to plug in there, you know, so something to save the world is out here and it's getting plugged in to battle Royale. And from there, it's taking all of the information that it needs for like the main game on the server, all the information like that to be able to connect for us to play and all that. But the actual plugins to save the world is actually over here. And uh, he went on to tell me that a lot of the important bits of save the world 
uh, are still in the main files, but a lot of the content was removed, was moved over to a plugin. Hero schematics, items, map, uh, map tiles, etc. All that stuff is now out there and it's plugged into Fortnite. We'll just call it Fortnite now, but it's plugged into Fortnite. At any time, they can disconnect them. If they disconnect all those plugins, it doesn't do anything to Fortnite. Fortnite stays there. Battle Royale stays there. But all of Save the World, all the heroes, schematics, all that can be disconnected. Now, again, like I said, that makes it much easier to be able to disconnect Save the World from Fortnite. If they were to close it down or something like that, which I don't think is going to happen anytime soon. I think they are going to finish out the full year rotation. Again, we're going to get a little sprinkling of new things, a new mission quest, a new hero, a new weapon. One thing every three months until we complete the full year rotation. Once we complete the full year rotation, I don't really see us getting any more new stuff, but maybe we will. Maybe every single, sem every single semester, every single season, we'll get a little something new and we'll just continue on this yearly schedule um, of the events, you know, ventures all of this in a yearly schedule and then little bit of little things new here and there but it's possible it's possible to keep doing that if save the world is released it's outside of the main game because then it doesn't really affect what happens in the main game fortnite save the world can just keep chugging along for an indefinite period of time and developer cloakstar has a lot more control on fixing and updating and improving the game within the plugin so if there is a problem with a one particular hero or one particular something they can fix it that much quicker now again that's both the positive way of looking at it and the negative way of looking at it it can go both ways and the main problem is if they don't communicate with us if we don't have developer communication we have no idea what they're thinking if we don't have a developer blog if we don't have a roadmap if we don't have anything like that there is no way for us to know what the developers intend to do now even having said that the developers can say that the game is going to be around for years that they have a lot of plans for it and then it can get shut down <coughs> paragon <coughs> paragon for those of you who know and went in on that you remember what happened uh, they told us that the game was going to be around forever. They had a tons of plans and then shut down. Um, so it's possible. Anything is possible in this crazy world. But I would like to hope for the best. Now, having said that, like I said, that's that's a huge potential of what can happen. And the biggest thing we need right now, it's so positive to see this. It's so positive to see all these changes and all these things happening and all the all the communication now. Um, like I said, seeing this on the Trello board, seeing this right here in the broadsides, it's really positive. It's awesome to see that they're that they're listening to the things that are happening. Um, and even more, there's one more thing, which actually let, let me see if I can't find this really quick. Wait a second. All right. So basically here, let me show you guys real quick. Uh, right here this is a comment on reddit recently that magist responded to you guys know who magist is someone asked said hi you magist uh can you tell us if it's intentional or a bug i need the information so i can spend a voucher or not on the sailor clark and they are asking about the damage that zap is doing remember guys if you get a sailor clark you get zap you guys may have seen the video i just released where i showed doing over 10 million damage and you can do more as long as you have time and enemies to build it up. You can continue to do doing damage. Um, Magist did say, in my opinion, and this is something I want you guys to remember. Remember, Magist is not a developer. Magist is a community manager. Magist talks to us. There's like the, the developers are here. Magist is here. We're over here. So the developers say something to Magist. Magist brings it to us. We say something. Magist listens to it. He takes it to the developers. Magist has no control over the game. So going to him and saying, hey, change this, change that. It does nothing. He doesn't have any of that control. Who knows? Maybe he's becoming a developer. I don't know. But um, but that's how it is. So he said, my opinion, Azalea is definitely worth a pickup for sure, which she is. I completely agree with that. However, Zap Zap. Okay, so that's kind of weird. So I think there he meant to say Zap. The Zap Zap is the other weapon, the little weapon that I really like. I think he just meant to say Zap there, not Zap Zap. 
zap scaling that high is definitely a bug. It's not intended to be able to one shot mini bosses and miss monsters. So that right there is really important. And again, I am going to talk about this again in the future, but um, I do want to bring this up because this is very important. He is telling us there that scaling that high is definitely a bug. What does that mean? There's probably supposed to be a cap to it. You guys saw my video. It took me 30 minutes to get to the point of doing 10 million damage. You can do it a little bit faster if you're going into a mission with four people. Uh, of course, that scales you up as well. But as the last thing I tested it, because I was wondering if they fixed if they fixed it this morning with the update, it's still the same. It's still working the same. It's still scaling up. I did a couple of missions, you know, like an easy mission with some people. Uh, one time I scaled the uh, damage up to 500,000. Uh, the other time I scaled it up to almost 2 million. So if you look at it from that point of view, it's not supposed to one shot mini bosses and miss monsters. Now, one shotting a red eyes or a taker is not that big a deal. One shotting a smasher is. So if it's not supposed to one shot a miss monster, a smasher or a mini boss, then probably it's supposed to have a cap. But again, again, to that, I have to say, it's very, very important to think about and listen to the community and what we're saying and also what the developers are saying. This is the key that we are missing once again, the communication. Seeing this, very positive. Seeing this right here, very positive. Seeing this, very positive. It's all very positive to see all of this communication coming to us, but there needs to be more of that communication in the sense of, let's say, for example, the zap. And again, not zap zap, because I don't believe that Magis meant the zap zap. Again, for those of you who are wondering, the zap zap is this right here. This is the zap zap. The zap zap is possibly my favorite weapon in the game. It is incredible. It is awesome. I love the weapon. But what we're talking about here is the perk zap. So the perk zap, which is right here, right there, this perk zap right here. I believe, I believe that it's supposed to have a cap. And I also believe that that description is wrong. The description should say, you know, scales up in damage every single hit by blah, blah percent until a maximum of 1 million or 2 million or something. Because this perk was a perk that was not worth using before. It was not at all worth using. But now... It's worth using. And again, I don't think it's really that overpowered. I don't think it's that overpowered because it only fires once every six seconds and it takes a very long time to scale it up to that level of damage. I think it's actually working pretty good. Yes, they might need to cap it, but again, communication, communicating with us about what's going on. And I have to take it back all the way to the news, uh, which I think it's, uh, let's see. So this one, yeah. So this one right here, if I have to take it back, um, this is going to be the news we've most recently saw, uh, where it said right here, uh, be on the lookout for a next home base status report to learn about a new quest line, the return defender and small quality of life updates. I really hope we see it. I really hope we see in the home base status reports that communication, that kind of telling us, hey, we heard this, hey, we're changing this, hey, we're doing that. The fact that they changed so many little things that honestly were quite positive. Extraterrestrial, Rio, Zap, there's been a couple other things that have been changing. Those are really, really positive changes in the game. And something I've said about many games before and about developers, it's okay for them to self, it's okay for them to pat themselves in the back. It's okay for them to tell us, Hey, we listened to your feedback and Hey, we've been changing these things. By the way, extraterrestrial, this was her former perk. Now it's her perk, which I'm going to be talking about that. I'm going to be doing another video just about extraterrestrial and the different loadouts. Uh, I've been trying some different loadouts and I have some really good loadouts. So showing that the fact that they changed her her perk showing the fact that they apparently buffed zap showing the fact that you know they're doing different things in the game in that sense that's a good thing it's a good thing it's a positive thing and also it's really good when they tell us hey something's not working like the broadside thing 
the broadside thing is wonderful i i love this i absolutely love the fact that they put this in game yes they put it on the trello board but not everyone goes to check the trello board as often as i do or some other people do it is a good thing to do it is a good thing to do to check the trello board but and this is the other thing the trello board was so unused for so long for save the world that it was kind of like well what's the point if developer cloaks are is out there advocating and working for us and he is working really hard to get these bugs worked out and shoot them out to the trello board and post them on here and talk with magis and communicate with the community that's awesome and it's very hopeful for the future i'm not expecting weekly updates i'm not expecting a twine storyline i'm not expecting a new map i'm not expecting a bunch of new heroes or new llama or anything like that because i don't think the game is going to do that i don't think that epic is going to put that type of money resources and effort and development power into into developing a game that's over three years old i would much rather see them develop a save the world 2 built on the unreal engine 5 for the future but that's just my personal opinion but anyway I'm going to leave it there, guys. Hopefully, this video helped clear out some things. Like I said, we talked about the Trello board. We talked about what's going on right now. And we talked about that communication that's happening in the game right now. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. As always, I am DUJ2. If you guys enjoy this video, if you enjoy what I do on my channel, please do me a huge favor and have yourself a fantastic day. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate you all. And I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.